following presentation is for mature audiences only. Who are you? He's a fine man. All hell is broken loose. He's a great broadcaster. He's a very powerful guy. Absolutely brilliant. Feared by men, adored by women. He's a smart boy. It's patriotic. It's no big deal. It's the end of the world. I might as well tell you now. He's a monkey. And how you doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? Welcome in to another edition of The Wild Side with Eric Clark. I'm your host, Eric Clark, saying thank you for taking time out of your busy day to give my video a watch and a listen. If you like it, like it. If you think other people are going to like it, give it a share. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel and that you are following me on all the social media platforms. That way, if there's a band, a song, a video, something you want me to check out, hit me up with a comment or a DM, and I'll put it in the handy-dandy notebook. Now, if you are going to leave it in the comments below, just do me a favor. Give it a cursory read-through. If you see your song's already been suggested, video, band, whatever, just leave a like in and I concur. That'll help me put it into a, a little list and organize it and most requested, if you will. So it's been one of those days. I've got a lot of videos ahead, so I'm going to try to get through this and practice brevity for you. So before we get started, I do want to say thank you to those that make it possible. That would be Aspen Dental, Connect 200, Music 2C, and Gothic Jewelry. Click the link below, enter in the promo code ERIC20, and get 20% off your metal bling. So today's video is coming from a previous Nightwish video I did covering their new album, Human Nature. I covered tracks two and three, and everyone said, man, you really should have started with number one. But uh, for some reason, I, I, would, I could lie and say a lot of things, but I just think I grabbed the first track I saw and went ahead and reacted to it and then did the subsequent one. So today, we're going to check out track one from Nightwish's recent release of Human Nature, and this is called Music. Here we go. So let me pause here for just a second before I'm, I'm thinking this is going to kick into a different time period. But that was that that was very um, that was a great that's a great way to start a record right there because it is very um, it's bringing up when I was a kid uh, I read Longfellow's Evangeline along with the other two and it really painted a specific picture in my head. You know, this is the forest primeval. And this, this music so far that I'm hearing in this, the pulse that I'm feeling in this song so far is really a visual, a really good visual representation of what that poem left in my brain. So he's, I'm starting to think this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, very, very primitive, obviously. I'm not, I'm not introducing you to something you don't know. 
great way to start though. Very primitive. Traveling through time. Awesome.
Oh, okay, I didn't realize it was coming up on an end there. Well done, man. That was that definitely lost me in the story that was being told and the music that went along with it. So let me back up here. Uh, let me just pause for a second because once again, going back to my comment about I think this guy knows what he's doing. Tuomas Holopainen is a genius at tapping into very specific connections that you're making to his music that he has no connection to, right? The connection I am making to this song from the beginning and then the journey it took me through and my understanding of it is all on me. But his ability to musically guide you through that journey of understanding is absolutely incredible. So going back to the beginning, let's talk. I, I really want to mention this because this is very primitive and this, this song basically is a metaphor for history. It's a metaphor for the music history. It's a metaphor for human history. It's a metaphor for your own history. It's metaphorical on as many layers as it is musical. Very complicated. Uh, so I got lost in it. I really did. And that's a good thing. So at the beginning here, um, it talks about the first time you hear music. And I remember my early dives into music. And, and specifically what took me there. And then there are certain transitions from music to culture itself. So I grew up around a lot of people that listen to a lot of different music. Um, so at the beginning here, I'm listening to this very primitive, well, sorry, man, very primitive uh, sound. He's, he's tapping in to just a pulse life itself the beginning of a beat the pulse of music is coming from your heart it's what connects you to the music no matter what you're listening to you are connected through a circadian rhythm that you're developing with what you're hearing right and he's so good at tapping into that so i like how he's going from the basic heartbeat of the human i'm going to tear up talking about this because this journey that he took you just took you on is magnificent for me it is anyway so now he's going into the primitive element of understanding rhythm the primitive beginnings of you understanding what does make your foot tap and not just what does make your foot tap think about the early human and the first time of developing rhythm and sound and tone and how just shocking that would have been it's like the joke about the the milk right where a bunch of humans stood around and and said i want to pull on that and i want to drink whatever comes out of it similar understanding and discovery of music and it's it's he's talking about the species but he's also talking about you and the first time you heard music and how it affected you and how you were primitive in your own understanding of music itself and why you dug it so he's taking you through this retroactive, genuflective journey, not only through the history of music and sound itself, here, you know, just banging on tree trunks, and everybody gets into it, and then someone starts humming or groaning or whatever, very primitive, early stuff. So what it reminded me of, it reminded me of the line, this is the forest primeval and something about the moss and the trees. But it's a poem from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who also wrote the Song of Hiawatha and uh, Paul Revere's Ride or the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. And I fell into Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and then Nathaniel Hawthorne and everything before going into school because my mom was a big fan of Neil Diamond. So again, he's taking me on this journey where in my head, all of these things are firing, these memories of my early experiences with things that made my foot tap and things that made my brain explore and, and how he's taking me back to listening to so much Neil Diamond from my mom that I go, who's this Longfellow guy that there's a serenade about? And then you discover Evangeline and then you discover all of the other greats. And so it, it took me back to a very specific halcyon period of my life of innocent understanding of what I was feeling in connection to the music that I was hearing. And I even remember the first, the first piece of music I ever picked up 
and put on a record player and said, I want to hear that was Booker T and the MGs Green Onions. It is, it is just such a primitive song. It's such a primitive groove that it spoke to this very primitive part of me. Yet it also let me explore rhythm and time and signatures and changes and beats and things like that all in a three and a half minute period. So this song is not only good about creating the sound of early music, it's giving you a visual of the early music to the audio of here's the history of music. And then we get into the operatic and then it goes into the metal. So he takes you right away on this fantastic journey through your own time. And, and again, it was, very, it was very interesting how he was able to just tap right in to those specific images that connect with those memories and with those sounds. So, so you're, again, it's, it's, this is the four, it, it just took me, took me to a very specific place. So then as the, as the song develops and you start to get into this song lyrically and you're starting to understand that this is a metaphor for, for not only the human race, discovering and developing and exploring and experiencing music throughout the ages, but it also takes you personally, because that's how well he writes, that he takes you personally on your own discovery of music. When did you discover you loved metal? When did you discover you love rock and roll? Who are the ones that keep you enveloped in that blanket of security and safety that is so personal that we get into really crazy, really crazy arguments about it because it is so personal to us. What, what he just did with me in my childhood is very personal, right? It's very personal. But and he's total, we're total strangers. But he has the ability to reach in both musically and lyrically to allow you to go through this reflective period to a soundtrack. It's just fantastic. So then you get into the lyrics. And I don't know if it's a hex, hexameter or whatever he's writing these lyrics in. But I know that he's writing these lyrics for someone that he knows can sing them. So when Flora Yunsen sees these lyrics, I'm, I'm sure there had to be a moment of, oh, dude, <laughs> right? Dude, come on, man. Come on. Seriously? She nails it. And again, there's no, there's no ramps. There's no drops. Very thick and clean. And what I know is that she's able to do this live, that, that very... Uh, Just absolutely brilliant how she is capable of within the note, right? Like, or within the, the word, I guess, the lyric. She understands where Tuomas's head is. And she knows how to create that ebb and flow so quickly that it almost becomes one wave. So even though it, it, it you, at first your brain filter goes, wait, what? Blah, 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 blah. But then as it stretches out, as it elongates, you understand this is one way. Very unique. I, I, I can't express, I can't express how brilliant that songwriting is, that lyric writing, to not only put it together to flow, but to, to also have substance to the lyric, because I'm going to get to that here in a second. I am going to get to that. So I really dig how he knows I know I can write these lyrics. I am free. It is, it is absolutely a, a wonderful time to be alive. Honestly, it is. To know that there's a group of people out there who are so brilliant at what they do that any, and I'm going to be honest, I've had this experience one time with someone. Where anytime I work with people, I, as an artist, artist, as a performer, if you're, if you're performing with a group, you do worry naturally about the other people. Regardless of how much respect you have for them, regardless of how awesome you think they are, you can't help it but to have reticence in your relinquishing of worry of the other people involved in your project if that makes sense. So I've only had it one time in life 
where I knew the person sitting across from me knew everything about me, enough about me to know where I'm going and, and how I'm going to respond to what they're going to do. And I've only had that one time. And it's one of those things where it is very freeing. And I know that Tuama sees this as very, very liberating for him to be able to ex- explore like that. And for Floor Jonsson to be able to sing at that meter with that ability, with that inflection in her note carry is just absolutely magnificent. And knowing that she can do that live, I know she can do that live. It would just be, you know, it would be the chair, the Memorex, you know, getting blown away by it. So, but that's lyrically. Musically speaking, this is, again, um, the guy's the, the, the trifle king of metal. You know, you got, you got custard, you got, you know, berries, you got cream, you got beef, you got peas, you got mashed potatoes. What's not to like? So you've got all of these perfect layers that are also being strung out in this perfect flow. Uh, a lot of times, even when, when it picks up pace and when it picks up, you know, uh, motivation, it still maintains a very colorful flow in the color pattern. And it's all put together perfectly. It's all layered perfectly. And that riff, man, come on. He just creates, Empu just creates these perfect rock riffs that are so unique in tone that you're starting if you know i know that nightwish fans as soon as you hear it you know it's empo you just you know that this guy is creating this tone through that riff where you go man that's very but you can't come up with it because you can come up with so you can come up with so many likes it's like this it's like that the problem with your brain is it won't let you get beyond the like. You, you, you just end up going, okay, that's Empu. He's a genius at creating that tone and creating these riffs. And the band as a whole create this fantastic color pattern through a spectrum that allows you to take that genuflective journey that the lyrics put you on. And there was one lyric that I said that was very interesting um, where he said, uh, you never sing to them. That was it. It's, this is one of those lyrics like a Fleetwood Mac, players only love you when they're playing. Um, it, it's one of those harsh realities that everyone involved in the endeavor hopefully can understand. Um it's going to sound so I don't want anyone to think that being in the audience or being a supporter or being a fan doesn't have an impact and it doesn't mean anything. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is performers are going to perform whether you're there or not. Performers want to perform. Sorry, I apologize. That is, that is the wrong wording. Performers would perform to no one, to an empty house. The validation we receive from the audience is is exactly that it's a validation of that of that art of that song of that joke of of that dance that we're trying to get out so when you hear a line like that you know we're never singing to them maybe i'm misinterpreting it (coughs) excuse me but what this does is it creates a guilt with some performers a lot of performers they it creates a guilt when you realize it's, a, it's almost selfish, you feel selfish for that. You feel like, oh, that, does that mean I don't care? No, it doesn't mean you don't care. It means you don't care where it comes out. It's very difficult. It's very, again, it's so esoteric and it's so deep through the psyche, through the ego, through the super ego. It's into the id where it creates this not a self-loathing, but a, am I a narcissist? And am I a megalomaniac? Because I, 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 I feel the need to perform. I'm singing to them, but I'm not singing, you know, I'm not singing for them. I'm singing, you know, I'm not singing to them. I'm singing for them. I'm singing to the world. I'm singing to whoever will listen. Maybe that's it. I don't know, man. This guy, 
<laughs> this guy goes deep, man. He, uh, I would, he goes like two knuckle deep on you, right? Like it's, oh, okay, it's just going to be a tune about music. And then you're like, oh, geez, man. You just took me on this massive psychological esoteric journey that I was not prepared to go on. The song, like I said, metaphorically is layered as the song itself. And just absolutely brilliant. So again, I am jealous that there are people out there that got to see them live, and it is festival tour, so hope, uh, festival season. So I'm hoping that in the future, I'll get some really good audio quality live of this performance, and I, I would do a reaction to that. But that is a great song, great journey. Um, I think that's the word I'm looking for. That was a seven-minute journey emotionally uh metaphorically literally uh, all of it it was really good so that was music by nightwish from their album human nature again thank you very much for the suggestion and thank you very much for hanging out with me today and watching the video make sure you click the link below get your 20 percent off gothic jewelry thank you aspen dental connect 200 music 2c and gothic jewelry most of all thank you make sure you are subscribed to the youtube channel make sure you're following me on all the social media platforms and make sure you're looking out for each other make sure you're looking out for your neighbor try to do at least one good thing a day i am eric clark this has been the wild side